So question 22 leads given that the square root of 2 is equal to 2 to the power x find the value of x so what that implies is basically we have 2 to the power half which is the square root is equal to 2 x the bases are the same if the bases are the same it means the power should be the same so what we need is 2 over 1 over 2 is equal to x so we'll get the base so basically x is nothing but half that's how you solve this part as simple as that remember we are using the principle of indices so if a to the power y is equal to a to the power x it means x and y are equal that's what we'll use there so let us go to b b the diagram below shows graph of y is equal to um open bracket minus x plus two close bracket then open bracket x minus 5 the graph casts the x axis at a and b at a and b then find the coordinates of point a and b so what we do is basically we equate this func this equation to 0 so what this tells us is this plus that and x minus 5 is equal to 0 then it's either this one is equal to 0 or this one is equal to 0. So minus x plus 2 is equal to 0 or uh, x minus 5 is equal to 0. That's what that implies. So when this one crosses the equal sign or when let us close to. So when 2 crosses the equal sign it becomes a negative. So we have ne ne negative x is equal to negative 2. We divide by negative 1 by negative 1. So what we end up with x is equal to 2 which is this point okay point a then we have x is equal to when this one crosses the equal sign becomes a positive five so hence we have a point a is basically two comma zero because remember along the x-axis y is equal to zero then point b is five comma zero also along the y along the x-axis then the question goes on to ask us to find the maximum the maximum value of y so the maximum value of y so if we are to find the maximum value of y from this equation what we will notice here is this so we expand this equation okay when you expand this equation we end up with y is equal to this one times this one we have negative x square then we have this one multiplied by that we have positive 5x then this one multiplied by that we have positive 2x then this one multiplied by this one we have negative 10. then we end up with y is equal to x to the power negative x to the power 2 then plus 7x then minus 10. then we differentiate so we differentiate dy dx is equal to minus 2x plus 7 just 7 remember you subtract the power by 1 then that's the differential now when you're talking about that maximum at maximum point at maximum point which is uh in this case at this point the point of tangents the gradient here is zero that's why we are differentiating the gradient here is zero of this line so what it means is we can equate this differential to zero and find the value of x so what we do is we are equating this to zero so meaning negative 2x plus 7 is equal to zero then what we have is minus 2x is equal to negative 7 we divide by negative 2 negative 2 so x is equal to basically 3.5 so 3.5 is the value of x at t maximum so now having known the value of x at maximum we can go back to this equation we can go back to this equation let me just lab this part let's lab, lab this part so we can go there and substitute in that equation to find the value of y at that point okay 
So what we do is when we go there and substitute, we end up with y is equal to what's the value of x is minus 3.5 because it's 3.5 then plus 2 then 3.5 minus 5 then we end up with a uh, basically minus 1.5 multiplied by minus 1.5 so 1.5 multiplied by 1.5 so if you say 15 times 15 is basically 225 so 225 two decimal black process backward so 225 15 times 15 if this is a 15 then two decimal places because you know, there is two decimal places so <coughs> we are ending up with basically uh, a 2.25 so 2.25 as uh, the maximum value of uh, of y this is uh, the maximum value of uh, y so basically this is how you deal with question e. 22 question 22 let us move to question 23 our last question in this session so let me just zoom a bit so that you're able to see clearly and follow along so what is important is follow along try then where you're stuck come and watch this video listen to it get the principle then until you are confident enough so question 23 the diagram below shows the speed time graph of a moving object find the acceleration of the object when t is equal to 3 so when t is equal to 3 t is somewhere here along this line so this gradient is t is step so the velocity there is constant throughout so what we need to do is we need to use the formula acceleration is given by velocity 2 minus velocity 1 over time 2 minus time 1. So what's the value of velocity from where it started from at 4 to here? We have is 24 minus 4 over from 0 to 5 times the 5 minus 0. So we end up with 20 divided by 5. So we get basically 4 meters per second square as our one acceleration so even when the time is three acceleration is not changing is remaining the same throughout this straight line it's remaining the same at the same rate which is four meters per second square so probably oh please don't go and look for a three on this graph just know that if it's a straight line like this acceleration is the same whether at this point or this point or this point it will remain at four meters square because you see the same slope acceleration just changes here then here okay all right so remember acceleration is the rate at which the speed is changing so between uh zero and five the speed remain the same what the speed four meters per second square so even at three seconds the speed did not change was increasing at the same rate what's the same rate the speed was in, in, increasing at four meters per second then between 5 and 10 the speed maintained at the same if it's 100 meters per second it remains 100 meters per second that's why you're seeing here the speed is 20 meters per second it never change never accelerated or decelerated never increase the speed or reduce the speed then let us move look at question b question b says given that the object decelerates as 2 meters per second square find the value of t find the value of t again here we use the same principle that we have used on party a so the principle here is now deceleration so again deceleration is given by final final velocity v2 as the previous velocity then time final minus the previous time one so in this case what's the final velocity so the final velocity is zero so we have zero minus starting we're starting from this point which is 24 then time we are moving from uh 10 second to the final t which is t minus 10. now what we know is this is deceleration so deceleration means it's a negative reducing so this is basically minus 2 should give us minus 2 then we solve for t so what this 0 minus 24 we get a minus 24 is equal to a negative 2 multiplied by t 
minus 10. Then what we can do is we can divide by negative 2 this side and negative 2 this side. Okay, so we end up with 12 is equal to t minus 10. So solving for t, so t will is equal to 10 plus 12. So t ends is equal to 22 seconds. So 22 seconds is our answer to b. All right, let us look to let us look at the last question, which is question C. So for question C, let me just create space. Just create space. So if I create space, we need to answer question C on this one. Then question C, calculate the average speed of the object in the first 10 seconds of the journey. The first 10 seconds of the journey. So basically, we are just going looking at uh, these two parts so we're looking at from so we're looking at this area this is the area we are looking at let us find that area so we know that speed is equal to distance over time so first thing is we need to find this area of this triangle as the measure of speed so we have three parts so what do you know distance we equal to basically the first one is a uh, 4 multiplied by 5, which is this region. Okay, then next is this region, which is basically plus, is a triangle half. Okay, multiplied by 5, multiplied by uh, basically 24 minus 20 minus 4, which is from here to here. Then we add this rectangle, which is basically 5 multiplied by 10. Okay. So what we get is basically this one is 20 plus uh, this is 20. 20 times 5 is 100 times half is 50 plus 50. So we end up with 120 as our distance. So the distance covered. So having known distance, we can find speed. So speed is basically distance is 120 divided by what's the total time? 10 seconds. So we get speed is equal to basically 12 seconds. 12 meters per second as our average speed 12 meters per second so basically this is how you answer question 23 to get the full max thank you for joining us through this journey where we are looking at 2021 mathematics paper one